Hey, welcome to a brand new year, a brand new season of life, and a brand new series here on the Midweek Refill. I'm Bishop A. Reginald Lippman, Senior Pastor of the New Mountaintop Church, and we're excited to welcome you from wherever you're viewing. We're beginning a brand new series this week, simply titled Finding Peace When Life Spins Out of Control. You know, even at the top of a year or ending an old year, you can find yourself quickly swept up in the throes of life because things can happen so quickly. Things can turn so fast. But do you know that you can actually use what you go through in this year or even years to come to encourage somebody else? Well, hey, I want you to stay tuned in this series because in session one, we're going to be talking about how you can share peace. Be sure to hit that like, subscribe, and do leave a comment. We'd love to go back and read your comments. I'm Bishop Littman. Stay tuned. You're watching the Midweek Refill. And welcome back. I'm excited to have you here. Please leave a comment. Let us know where you're viewing from and also drop any questions you may have for the video in the comments section and we'll get back to you as quickly as we possibly can. So even with the new year, sometimes you can find yourself quickly swept off your feet by the unexpected. But when unexpected things happen in this year or any other time of your life, it's important to know that you can still find peace even when life spins out of control. So for the next six weeks, I want you to be sure to join me each and every week for each episode as we share with you tidbits about how to su survive life when things go awry. Also, I want you to make sure that you access the free PDF download. You can find the link in the description below. It's a free ebook that will be filled with helpful information to help you think through life and through your own situations. In it, you'll find an inspirational story from which you'll be able to draw so many personal applications. You'll also find discussion questions for each and every section. So I look forward to you downloading the ebook and even share this with a friend that might need to know what to do when life spins out of control. So in this first session, we're going to be talking about sharing peace. I don't think there are many more comfortable and comfort comforting words of Christ than that which we find in the 14th chapter of the Gospel of St. John. I want to zero in for a moment on chapter 14, verse number 27. And feel free to grab your Bible or your favorite app or your favorite device that you like to study from. But John 14 and 27, Jesus is recorded to have said these words, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. And then he goes on to say, Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. What a remarkable passage of scripture that is for all of us in these topsy-turvy times in which we live, where there seems to, as of late, be a constant threat to security. There's often constant talk of government shutdowns. Many people are economically sur suffering while others are surviving. These are times that we really do need peace, but not a peace that comes with a receipt, but only the peace that comes from our Savior, Jesus Christ. And in these words to his disciples then, and vicariously to you and I as his disciples of today, and those who will even come behind us as we disciple others, we are reminded that there is a peace that is above and beyond anything that any of us could ever produce on our own. 
For Jesus left us with peace. But not just mere peace, my friends. He calls it my peace. And he left it to us and for us. And yet he gives it to us on an everyday, current, daily basis. Present tense and future tense. My peace I give. I give it and I continue to give it to you. And I love what he says in that next line. I do not give to you as the world gives. Now, think about what that means in a very practical application. People give and they take away. People give and often it's not sincere. People give and they never let you forget what they have given you. In fact, people will give and then boast and brag about it all over town as if that is their only sense of satisfaction is in the boasting rather than in the blessing. Jesus does not give us peace like that. He doesn't give us peace so he can broadcast it to everyone. He does not give us anything for that matter so he can quickly snatch it back if he should get angered with us as people do. But he says, I don't give you peace as the world gives. And also, he doesn't give us peace in the way that the world defines peace. Drop in the comments right now, what are some of the ways that the world may obtain peace or even define peace. What are your thoughts on that? Drop it in the comments right now. So the world often thinks of peace only in terms of possessions, right? Only in terms of what a person has, maybe financial status or uh, their economic stability. I hear many people say that if I know I've got money in the bank, then I can sleep at night. Well, what do you do if you don't have money in the bank? Jesus says you can still have peace because peace is not limited to possessions. Peace is not even limited to people. Peace is not limited to what position you hold in life. When you have the peace that only Christ can bring into your life and into your heart, my friends, that is a peace that helps you to have a heart that is without disturbance. In fact, your heart can be at perfect peace. That's why Jesus continued to say, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Of course, he was preparing his disciples of the time for his departure as he would go to the cross and ultimately be raised from the dead and ascend back to the Father in heaven to sit on the right hand of God the Father. And yet he says to them, although your mentor for these past three and a half years the one with whom you have traveled and been provided for and all of that. Although I am leaving, he says, don't let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Now, these words for Jesus' followers at the time were words that they desperately needed to hear. Because as followers of Christ, or as they were called the people of the way at that time, they were about to go through severe persecution because of their following of Jesus Christ. So they needed to hear these words, don't let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. But even in today's time, I want you to pay close attention to the words that Jesus says in the last couple of phrases of John 14, 27. He says, do not let, notice that word, allow, do not permit, do not suffer, do not orchestrate your thoughts so that your heart is troubled or disturbed or maladjusted or anxious or bitter and all of those types of things, which means you and I have the power to control whether or not we live in a state of anxiety. Otherwise, he wouldn't have said, don't let it. So check this out. Whatever thoughts we let in determines what we let out. So the thoughts that we let in determines what we let out, what we let out of our mind, what we let out of our belief system, what we, what we let out of our lifestyle is determined by the thoughts that we let in. That's why Jesus says, I want to give you peace for your thoughts. And I don't know who this is for. I just want, to, want you to type me in the comments if this is for you. 
But Jesus wants you to have peace in your mind by letting in only the comforting words of Christ, only the comforting words of Scripture, so that you can let out of your life things that reflect the peace of Christ at work in your life. So do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. It's what Jesus told them and what Jesus tells us today. So let's talk a bit more about John 14 and kind of look at it from a summary perspective, because this is an amazing chapter. And I challenge you to read it this week, along with the exercises in the handout that you're going to download after this is over. So in John 14, Jesus is doing several things. He's reiterating to his disciples that faith in him alone will bring salvation. Nothing but faith in the Lord Jesus Christ will bring them and us salvation. And he also uses another metaphor in John 14, and that is the I am statement. Because when he shares with them that he was about to go away and prepare a place for them, that where he was, they might be also. One of his followers said to him, Lord, how do we know where you're going and how can we possibly know the way? How can we get to where you're going if we don't know where you're going? Jesus says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. And that's John 14 and 6. And what Jesus was saying is this, that even though literally the disciples' life and to a degree Jesus' own life was about to spin out of control in the next few days after this statement with him being taken into custody and arrested un- under trumped up charges and beaten all night long and, and abused for our sake and taking a cross that would be shoved on his shoulders and taking that cross up the hill called Calvary and being nailed to that cross in his hands and his feet, being crowned with a mock thorny crown on his head, having beard hairs plucked out of his face and being called everything but who he really was. His life, to a degree, was about to spin out of control. But for the disciples, likewise, their lives would seem to spin out of control. Without the concrete relationship of having a tangible Jesus with them everywhere they went, who made ways and provided food, how would they survive? That's why he says to them, I am the way. Even when you can't see your way, he says, I am the way. And even when you question the truths that you've been taught, which This pandemic, which has lasted so long now, it seems, has caused so many believers to even question the things that they've been taught from their childhood. Like, is God real? Is church really necessary? Is God listening when I pray? Is there really life after death? All of these basic tenets that Christians have been taught and have held on and believed have been challenged in this time of these three years of pandemic. But to you, Jesus still says that even when it appears as if I'm not there and when it seems as if things are not going to get better and when it seems as if life that you know is not even worth it anymore, my statement remains the same. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And that's a powerful teaching and reminder for us as we embark upon this new season of life, that even when life seems to spin out of control, you can find peace in what you already know, that Jesus has already spoken because he is the way, he is the truth, and He is the life. So when life spins out of control, my friends, you have something to hold on to. And that's the words of Christ. That's the word of God. That's your belief in who he is. That's your knowledge and your acceptance of him as your personal Lord and Savior. And be reminded again of what he says. Peace I leave with you. 
My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. So therefore, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. So no matter what pops up in your life, no matter what storm spins up out of nowhere, no matter what whirlwinds may take place, remember what he said. I have left you with my peace. I have given you my peace. And I don't give it to you as the world does. I will not snatch it back from you. I will not boast and brag about it. I will not publicize my good deeds for you. So don't let your hearts be troubled. And... Do not be afraid. Here's what I love, I think, the most about this powerful passage of scripture. Is that Jesus died to give us peace. He almost speaks in a term of bequeathing. I leave with you. Right? Almost like he's reading his last will and testament. But here's what's so awesome and incredibly powerful about our Savior. Is that yes, he did die. And yes, he did bequeath us peace. But more importantly, he got up out of that grave early Sunday morning to ensure that you received every gift that he left to you even before he died. To ensure that his will was carried out and that everything he said would be received by everyone to whom he left it. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I don't give it to you as the world gives. So therefore, don't let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Now, you know, when Jesus uses that word peace, he's really referring to the wholeness in their relationship with God. Simply meaning because of him at work on your behalf, you and I can have a relationship with God that is based on wholeness and purity and love and complete acceptance by God. And when he's talking to his disciples, and again, this is vicariously a word to us today as his modern day disciples and all who will come after us in this life. He reminds them in John 14 that not only do you have me dying for you and ascending to the right hand of God the Father, sitting in my prayer position to pray and intercede for you every single day of your life until you come and be with me. But you also have the Holy Spirit at work on the inside of you. You see, Jesus went up, Holy Spirit came down. They did a swing shift, traded places as it were. And now the Holy Spirit lives on us, in us, around us, moves for us to keep us connected to God. The Holy Spirit is almost like God's Wi-Fi. We live in the Wi-Fi of God and the Holy Spirit brings about downloads from God to us, which would be answers, ways made, miracles, blessings and healings. And the Holy Spirit uploads our prayers so that God can hear us. But he was also telling his disciples who had majority of them come out of Judaism that you're no longer are required to be encumbered by rituals and sacrifices and blood animal sacrifices, laws, uh, all of that. All of the atonement for sin was now taken care of by Jesus Christ. Jesus' death on the cross and his resurrection would be a reason for them to no longer fear, for them to no longer have a troubled heart. And because of this, Jesus was telling his disciples, and he tells us today that because of his sacrifice and his blood, we're now free to communicate with God and to be in the presence of God, not only in the hereafter, but in the right now. Is that good news or what? So when life spins out of control, my friends, I want you to remember this. Jesus has left peace as a very precious gift to every single one of you. Peace is still at the tree. You know, at the time that you may be looking at me right now, I'm sure you're beyond Christmas and 
you put your decorations away and all of that and the shopping may be ended and what have you, but you still have a gift left at the tree. And you may be saying, well, what tree? I put the tree away in storage. It's back in the attic. It's back in the garage. It's back in the basement. No, there's a tree, friends, that we must never forget that is surrounded by the gifts of God. And that's the tree called Calvary. And Jesus left peace for you as a very precious gift for each and every one of you at the tree called Calvary. So don't miss out on your gift. Remember, when life spins out of control, and unfortunately it will, (laughs) remember these words that Jesus says to you, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give as the world gives, so don't let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. I hope so much that this message and this teaching has blessed you this week. But there's more. Make sure that you look in the link down down below. Down, ah, <laughs> look down in the description below. And you'll find there a link to a PDF handout that you can secure that will offer you even more. As you process this passage, read back through. Look at the notes. You're going to get so much more out of it than I can give you in this span of time that we're here together. But there's also a wonderful little story there. If you'd like to read or share stories with others, there's a great analogy there that you can read and draw some personal applications from. So I want you to make sure that you download the free PDF workbook. It is absolutely free, no charge. Also, Make sure you hit that thumbs up button, like, share, subscribe, and do leave us a comment. We love to go back and read your comments and see what it is that has touched you and blessed you. Well, hey, be sure to join us next week as we go to session number two. It's going to be even greater. God bless you, friends. I'm praying for you. Jesus loves you, and so do I. Be sure, like, share, subscribe.